It helps if you push the right button. Okay, a bit about me. Sorry if I'm repeating myself for some of you. I'm 13 years old. I live in Toronto with my mom, dad, little sister, and little brother. And I like eating. I have good taste, no pun intended. And in my quest to eat healthy, organic, and local foods, I rate and review. I started this blog reviewing restaurants I go to with my family in 2008 when I was eight years old. Now, I review restaurants, product, people, and markets in writing and video. I only review and write about foods, restaurants, people, or products that I like. Even though I've sometimes received free samples, I would never include them on my blog unless I thought they were of value to share. There are many that I have not written about. I'm also fortunate to be receiving lots of support from chefs and other bloggers who remind me of my responsibility to be positive and to try and have my writing make people want to be connected to the food on our plates. I'm absolutely against GMOs and absolutely for real good food. If you have a restaurant, product, or place that you would like me to review, please just let me know. I will post all of my contact information at the end of my presentation. I really do love doing this for fun, but I started to realize that people really do read my reviews and that other kids and parents wondered how I was and if I was eating healthier when I'm on my own. So here I am to hopefully explain how to eat healthy and feel good about it too. When I went to Harvest Kitchen in December, and Harvest Kitchen is a restaurant that opened up on Harvard Street just recently, I reviewed it. When I came back a second time, they said that they got more people who came to their restaurant because of my blog than when they were written up in Toronto Life. This really inspired me to keep writing reviews because I knew for sure that people read them. I really did not plan on all of the great things that have come from me starting a blog when I was eight including speaking here, but I'm so grateful and I'm having a great time. A few of the other things that I do with food outside of my blog are choosing topics related to food for my school assignments. So this year, my two largest projects were presentations, one on Monsanto and how evil they are, and the second one was on saving the bees. I also took part in a roundtable discussion with Lori, da with Lori David and Heather Reisman about their documentary Fed Up and how toxic sugar is. If you haven't seen this movie, please go, trust me, you'll learn a lot. It was very inspiring listening to her talk about how dangerous sugar is for everyone. And I knew it wasn't healthy, but I really learned so much, and so will you. I also got to put my own saying on the front of a Me to We style t-shirt, the one I'm wearing right now, and I do wear it a lot. I also filmed six videos with lifestyle videos that they shared about eating healthy new foods and to try and feel good about them. I wrote the scripts and then filmed them at the Big Carrot last year. And that was a ton of fun. You can check them all out at lifestylevideos.com. <laughs> so when I was eight, I had a red book that I would keep ratings of different restaurants in. This is an actual page of a rough draft and review of a market vendor I did a few years back. Um, so I wanted to be able to have more time on the computer, so my mom suggested I start a blog. Rise Ratings was born then and has been going strong for the past five and a half years. Sometimes I may review more at once than others, due to the fact that there aren't that many restaurants that pass my standards that I haven't already written up. Another thing that inspired me to start my blog was the fact that when my family discovered my sister had a severe nut allergy, we started looking at labels of food more closely, and my mom started realizing how many chemicals and preservatives there are in our food. We began the transition to organic, slowly weaning the harmful chemicals out of our bodies, until now, where we are committed to eating real organic food. Some ways that you can get into eating better as a family are... Eating family meals together. Eating family meals is such a great family bonding time. Eating together is a great time to talk about your day, talk about the future, or anything else that may come to mind. Family eating is also a great time for kids like me to try new foods that are prepared. Learn to cook. Although I admittedly like to eat more than I like to cook, but I participate in the kitchen often and have taken to plating meals and garnishing things creatively. I sometimes post my dishes on Instagram. Packing lunches from home. I pack much of my own lunch every day, after dinner. 
I use leftovers from our dinner and fresh or packaged and frozen foods from our kitchen. Because most everything is a good choice in my home. It makes it easier to pack. And I don't think I've ever had the same lunch twice. If you work, you can pack lunches too. Eating healthy and feeling good about it. So one of the questions I get asked most frequently is, What's it like eating like you do at school? Eating healthy at school is only as much of a problem as any kid or parent chooses to make it. If you feel self-conscious about eating differently, then you may become nervous and unconfident in your choices. There are actually many different ways to avoid scenarios like this. Just be confident and remember why you are eating healthy. There's an old question that goes, if your friends were jumping off the CN Tower, if you too, Dare to be different. If kids at school kid about your kale, snicker about your seaweed, and cringe at your crackers, or any other type of act of weird New Year food, um, tell them about how great it is and offer them a little bit. But beware and ask about allergies first. As I always say, eat healthy and feel good about it. My mom and I actually just recently wrote an article for Eco Parent magazine on how to be confident with, eco with different school lunches. I wrote my techniques, then my mother elaborated on them from her perspective. My points included, explain to your friends how good the food is for you. For example, when I eat stuff like seaweed, it gives me a burst, boost of energy after I eat it, so I can focus better. Then, your friends should be less skeptical of your food choices since you've told them how healthy it is for you. Don't be afraid. If you act like your lunch is a top secret government recipe, mm -hmm. kids will be even more weirded out by your food than they would be already. I recently brought kale chips to a rehearsal for my school play and for snack. And after kids will ask me why I was eating grass, I told them that they were kale chips and offered them some. Now the majority of kids in my class love kale chips. All it takes <laughs> is a little bit of information. <laughs> and others have a willingness to try new things which can also take some convincing. But us kids try new things all the time. It's adults that are actually way harder to persuade. Defend yourself. My mom once told me that one of the best tactics you can use is reversing the ridicules. If they make fun of you, just say, well, I'm enjoying it, and it's too bad you can't appreciate good food like I do. A great Gandhi quote, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Although it is a good quote, you want more to win them over than to win. Junk food is junk. Last year, when my brother's kindergarten teacher was serving cupcakes to the class, my brother, who was five at the time, asked him, what should I do while they are eating the cupcakes? This shows that it is never too early to educate kids on what is really bad food, and if they understand why they should eat it, Maybe they won't. It works for my family. Change up your food. If you continuously take the same lunch every day for the entire year, it'll get boring after about a week. If you change it up, take something new each day, or make variations of different dishes, lunch will never be boring. Your friends might also marvel at the colors and textures of your lunch, but if they don't, you can at least look forward to eating it. Make your lunch look cool. Your food may taste awesome. And if it's in a colorful lunchbox with colorful sauces, dips, and spreads, kids will get interested in that sort of thing. And I speak from personal experience. It's intriguing food really sparks curiosity in most people, not just kids. Take desserts. Kids will envy your lunch if you have some raw dark chocolate or cookies or cake. But what you don't have to tell them is that they might have some healthy ingredients in them, like zucchini or chia. You can find recipes like this in cookbooks, on Google, or even of your own crafting. Ask my mom. She makes variations on her own recipes. <laughs> Eating out can be tricky when you want to eat healthy, since someone else is shopping for ingredients and paying for your meal. Uh, preparing your meat, sorry. 
But there are certain things you can look for when checking out a restaurant to make sure it's serving real food and meets your needs and wants. Ask if the restaurant is non-GMO. Because if the restaurant serves GMOs, it shows that they don't really care much about the quality of their food and the health of their customers. Ask if they have vegan and vegetarian options that aren't just salads. This is important because you might have a vegan or vegetarian with you and they would probably prefer to eat something besides a salad. They need to have protein from beans, chickpeas, or other healthy legumes. Salads are not always the easiest meatless dish. Plus, having meatless meals often is great for your body. Try it. If we are in a restaurant and not confident with the food sourcing, we just eat vegan and gluten-free. So we avoid factory farm dairy and meat and industrial products. In this case, vegetables are safest. And maybe something from my mother's purse. She always has something. Ask them, if, ask them to take reservations. Because it is always good to be guaranteed a table and not have to wait in long lines for hours, especially with kids. And especially my brother. Ask them if they acquire produce from local farmers, because then the food didn't travel a really long way on trucks, planes, or boats, and it's supporting our own economy. And local stuff just tastes better. Make sure they aren't health washing. If they're promoting that their food is healthy, find out why, and verify that it's more than just a marketing claim. I like to ask where they source their dairy or meat from, because the answer, or lack of an answer, is very telling. Check to make sure they don't serve pop unless made in house with organic ingredients. Because if there's coke to go with the clean organic food, it just doesn't make sense. And you'll need to be very careful with what you eat. Make sure they can accommodate lots of allergies, including nut, gluten, soy, and dairy. Chances are that if they can understand your requests, they know what's in their food. So one of my biggest pet peeves at restaurants is when they serve Heinz ketchup with clean organic food. This defeats the purpose of having local and organic in the first place. Ask for homemade ketchup or skip that stuff. But if they have house-made ketchup, on the other hand, that is a great sign. And it shows you that they really do care about the food they serve. Some foods are healthy and some foods are not. There's no reason to eat things that are bad. Sometimes we will all eat things that aren't great, but there are a few things I suggest never knowingly eating. Anything genetically modified, because GMOs are seriously harmful to our bodies and the environment, and instead of being grown on a farm, they are grown in a lab by combining the DNA of two living things, such as a fish and a tomato. These foods are seriously harmful to our bodies, and they can cause cancer and other harmful sicknesses. These mutated plants are no longer natural and are lab grown instead of farm grown. The genetic modifications can seriously impact your immune system, which will not have the strength to fight off most diseases. GMOs can make you seriously sick, so you should try to avoid them as best you can. Monsanto tells us we need GMOs to feed the world. If we feed the world with GMOs, world will get sick. It has been proven that GMOs are seriously harmful to animals, plants, and especially humans. Another one I recommend avoiding is McDonald's and other fast food, because they are almost always chock full of unhealthy chemicals and additives, and use excessive amounts of salt, sugar, and fat. Sometimes one item can exceed what you're supposed to have in a category in an entire day. The next thing to avoid is Monsanto Grown Anything. Monsanto is one of the biggest biotech companies in the world. They have many patents and seeds, which technically should not be allowed, because that technically means Monsanto owns a portion of life itself. Monsanto uses these patents for terrible things, such as bullying farmers into working for them. It's a huge issue, much bigger than I can talk about here. Mm -hmm. But please Google, Monsanto is evil, and read, watch, and share. The last one I avoid is pesticide sprayed produce. If a fruit looks bumpy or bruised, it, or oddly shaped, 
that doesn't change the taste. In fact, it often makes it taste better. Pesticide spray produce may be immaculate looking, but it is not by any means healthier. I went to see Jamie Oliver speak once. He said he wanted people to start eating the ugly vegetables. I feel he said this because the beautiful vegetables are almost always sprayed with pesticides. My top tips to eat healthy starting today. So, show of hands, how many of you would like to start eating healthier today? <laughs> how many of you think you can start eating healthy? I still know that I have to eat much healthier too. Remember these great ways to get you started today. Know where your food comes from and eat local. This is important to do because the food that comes from close to home is fresher, healthier, and it tastes better. My parents teach me and my siblings that if we can trace our food back to where it came from and can feel good about it, then it's okay to eat. If we can't even trace it back, then it's probably not food we want to eat, or maybe not even real food at all. Shop at farmer's markets before the supermarket. You can meet the people who grew your food and taste the best of the best. The farmers and chefs that I see every week at the market are some of the nicest people I've ever met, and they're great teachers, too. Cook your own food. This is important to do because you know what exactly went into your meal, how it was made, who made it, and when it was made. You can have lots of fun in the kitchen, even if you aren't yet a good cook, and, it's, and involve your family and friends. Stay away from fast food. Fast food is, for the most part, comp comprised largely of GMOs and chemicals, plus salt, sugar, and fat. It's not the type of stuff that we should be fueling our bodies with. Choose organic. This is one where most people are reluctant, because you can get a carton of organic strawberries for $7, but, and you can get the same amount of strawberries, but conventional, for $4. While this may seem like the conventional ones would be a better deal, the organics actually are a much better one. See, the conventional strawberries are most likely sprayed with pesticides, which will be seriously harmful to your body. The organic ones are made without GMOs, harmful pesticides, and other toxic ingredients. They contain lots of healthy nutrients and enzymes, so they can really help your body stay healthy. Try going meatless more. Organic beans and greens are cheaper than chicken, so you can afford organic easier and give your body a break from eating animal products as much as you might. Eat colorful food from nature and try tons of new flavors. It takes 15 tries to like something new, and sometimes after months of years, you might like a food you didn't before. It's happened to me with tomatoes. <laughs> there are many different things you can do as a family to promote healthy eating. I'm going to spotlight on five of them today that are my favorites. But there are many other things you can do, so take family outings and find your own. Organic apple picking. In the fall, what better way to spend the day than with your family apple picking? It's so much fun walking through the rows of trees and harvesting the different types of apples. The only thing to watch out for is pesticides, because although they may look shiny and yummy, they are actually covered in layers of chemicals to make the bugs stay away. The thing with organic apples is that although they might not look perfect, they taste a lot better than the pesticide spray ones. My family loves Avalon Orchards just north of Toronto because they have a commitment to organics and pesticide free. The next bonus activity is cooking a special family meal. Cooking with your family is tons of fun, as I've mentioned multiple times because everyone gets to help prepare a meal, and nobody will then complain about the food. Cooking incorporates everyone's taste to make an amazing, colorful meal that is so much more enjoyable because everyone helped make it. Cooking is also a great time for parents to teach kids how to properly use kitchen utensils and devices. Set the table fancier and arrange what you've made in fun ways. Designs, colors, layers, there's no limit. The next one is visiting farmer's markets. This is so much fun because there's so much to do with so many different markets you can go to. My family goes to the Brickworks Market every Saturday morning to buy our produce and food for the week. We get to see lots of really nice people and get organic, healthy food. 
Watch out, because not all vendors at the markets are healthy. For example, there's one vendor that sells pesticide sprayed produce that you should never buy from. So it's really important, even at market, markets, to make sure you ask your farmer questions so that you know for sure that what you're buying is good food. Farmers markets are a great time for a family to have fun, and they, and they happen all throughout the week and all over the city. For example, a couple of summers ago, I convinced my mom to take me to a different farmer's market every day for six days in one week. <laughs> Next, we have growing your own food. This is great to do, because then you know exactly how your food was grown. It doesn't get any fresher. They're walking outside, harvesting some greens, and making a healthy salad or a full meal. Plus, then you can be sure no chemicals are sprayed on your food. Up here, we have pictures of harvest from my front yard, my brother with our bean trellis, and my sister with some chard and strawberries. Needless to say, gardening is fun, easy, and healthy. And if you prefer to do, not to do all the manual labor yourself, there are companies that will be happy to do it. My family uses Chris from Young Urban Farmers because he is really nice and is open to any ideas you may have for your garden. You can reach Chris at youngurbanfarmers.com. Growing your own has other benefits, like not being contaminated with strange chemicals and pollution while they're being shipped to your home or grocery store. They only have to travel a few meters by foot to get to your table. But this makes the greens much more healthy and nutritious. Finally, visiting farms that grow your food, and even helping them plant or harvest. Farms are such a great place to be, because the farmers are, for the most part, very nice people. Please remember to watch out for chemicals and pesticides that are sprayed. Cultivating farms are so much fun, but I highly recommend trying it at least once in your life. So those were the bonus activities, and I hope you will go home with your families and try a few of them, one, two, or maybe all five. And those were just my favorites, and there are tons more that you can find by being adventurous and just looking around for them or Googling them. So now what? I've gone through lots of things you can do at home to eat healthy. Healthier. So how many of you, by show of hands, are going to eat together, as, cook together as a family? <laughs> Eat family meals. Visit farmers markets. Eat organic. Stay away from GMOs. Okay, thank you. So thank you so much for coming. I would like to thank a few people before the end. Chantel and Deanna, thank you so much for inviting me to speak at this amazing conference this weekend. It has been such a wonderful experience, and I hope this can happen again in the future. Next, I would like to thank a different Rise, Rise Kombucha, which is the sponsor for my presentation. Their kombucha comes in many flavors, but my favorites, pictured here, are the mint chlorophyll and lemongrass. They are energizing and hydrating. Also, since they are fermented, they are really good for your gut. Please go try it. You can get it at most stores, including the Big Carrot, and since you all came to watch my presentation, you, if you haven't already, you can go get a bottle. Mm -hmm. And nobody asked me to write that. <laughs> so, my mom, dad, sister, and brother, thank you so much for being my lifelong inspiration to do what I do. You've raised me so well to my mom and dad, and I love you all. Again, I can't say enough thank yous to all of you. And I really appreciate you coming today. I am now going to share my quote with you, which I feel is a quote that we can all adapt to our daily lives. Part of taste is feeling good about what you eat, because I feel you can't truly enjoy eating something without feeling good about putting it in your body. So now, if anyone has any questions, um, I'd be happy to take them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, my social media is up on the board, as well as my blog. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Good food advocate. You're welcome. How do we clone you? 
Uh, I, I don't know. Because I, I know you don't like GMOs, but that would be one really good use for GMOs. On, on you. Thank you. Um, no, seriously, how, how do you influence your peers at school? And, um, and, and I know you spoke about, you know, people not being interested in certain foods and stuff like that, but how do you... How do you do that at school? Well, I, I I offer them to try the food if they if they're interested in it, and like then um, I can tell them more about it, and like if they like it or not depends on whether I can give them like websites or a store to get the dad, and it, it all just depends on whether the person likes the food or not. So, and I like during my presentations that I mentioned before that I did on Monsanto and saving the bees, like. I, I do these kinds of things because I, I love speaking about those topics and I want to spread awareness among kids my age that like that kind of stuff happens, you know, and we need to stop. So would you come to, to a school if you get invited to do, to do talks like that? For sure. Yeah? <laughs> For That's sure. great. Oh, hi. hi. So I'm just curious, when, you're, when you see a buddy of yours and he's eating something that's not healthy, what do you do? I, I don't generally go up to them and, be like, and go like, that's not healthy. Like, I, I'm not that kind of person. I'm the kind of person who will only do that if, like, they're, if they make fun of me for having, like, a, like, for example, a couple weeks ago, I just took a, a container of raw Mizuna to school and I ate it. Like, yeah. So I, I, I won't really generally go up to them and be like, that's not healthy, don't eat it. Only if they, um, only if they like ask me about my food, then I'll tell them more about what they're eating and yeah. Have you ever thought about maybe just the way you, you go to restaurants and, and write a review on mm -hmm. this? Have you ever thought, I know that might sound a bit controversial, but maybe doing that for the, school, for the lunches that you see at your schools? Uh, well, school? I, I, I don't think that's kind of the thing I'm looking for because like I'm, I'm more of a restaurant and re review blog, so I do mostly restaurants, but I will review some products and events from time to time. Like, I'll be writing a review of this weekend soon. Mm -hmm. Um, soon. Soon. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't always, uh, I, I, I don't think that's the kind of thing, like, I would be able to write more about because, you know, it's not something I've made. It's not, like, a restaurant, and yeah, I, I don't think it's the kind of thing that I'm interested in doing. Yeah. Have you noticed a big difference um, in your health compared to peers that maybe, you know, eat garbage food? Uh, no, I, I haven't really noticed a difference, but, you know, because um, I'm not the most athletic person. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd rather be reading than running. So uh, I, I don't really notice that much of a difference. So, yeah, like, I'm sure there is one, but I don't notice it. Yeah, any, any other questions? Ryan, I'm curious um, what you think you might do with all this food knowledge moving forward. Uh, I don't know. Funny story there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, don't, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do for a career, but my great-grandfather has already set ground rules for what I'm supposed to be. My, my great-grandfather, who is 100 right now, and he made me promise a couple years ago that, so I... I he asked me one day, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I told him, well, I'm thinking like musician or food blogger. And he's like, no, that is for a hobby. You have to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, or an engineer. So I, I haven't decided yet. And he made me promise that, but, but we'll see. We'll, we'll be see. keeping, we will all be keeping our eye on you. And when you're 21, please run for the prime minister of this country, okay? <laughs> and I'm not that much of a politician. Questions for Ryan? Yes. I just wanted to know if you, thank you very much for your talk, by the way. We thoroughly enjoyed it, speaking thank you, on behalf sir. of this role. Thank you. And uh, I was wondering if you were aware of any programs, maybe in university, where people could get a PhD in what you're talking about. I do not. Because that would get you your doctorate. For your doctorate. <laughs> okay, thank you for that information.
Well, let's give it up for Ryan.